It's 4.30 on WKYT this morning. An earthquake felled across central Italy has left several people dead and many without homes. We'll have the very latest on the earthquake. It's breaking news just ahead. Police are trying to find two people who they suspect stole $30,000 worth of equipment from a state agency. The latest on that investigation coming up. And in Jessamine County Business doing what they can to help a family deal with an unexpected and devastating loss. How you can help out and your weather forecast on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning, and it's so good to have you on WKYT. So we get this day going on your Wednesday. I'm Bill Bryant. We are almost halfway through the week, and we have had a gorgeous week so we far. We have. But you know what they say, all good things have to come to yeah, an end. I don't think it's an end. I think it's just, no. just a little, uh, maybe a shower or two. Yeah. Let's hope it's that Let's way, right? Let's hope so. <laughs> Let's check in with Micah. Yeah, He's in our first alert weather center. Kind of depends on what you're talking about. If you're talking about nice temperatures, yeah, that's coming to an end. But if you're talking about stormy weather, yeah, not so so much. Most of us stay dry the rest of the week off into the weekend. We just can't rule out a couple of spots with a few rumbles of thunder here and there. Temperatures are there in the 60s. It's a pretty good feel once again early this morning. Uh, not everybody is going to reach the 50s, but there could be an upper 50. But for the most part, yeah, we're going to be there in the mid 60s. Mainly dry this afternoon. It is getting warmer, 87 degrees in the forecast. Can't rule out a pop up shower or thunderstorm for today. And that goes for everybody. So only about a 20% chance of rain just popping up here and there. Next few days, we will have the chances there, but like I said, they're very small, but it's about the heat the next few days. It really bumps up. I'll show you if we have any 90-degree weather in the forecast coming up. Thank you, Micah. And breaking news this morning out of Italy. At least 10 people are dead after a 6.1 magnitude earthquake hit overnight in central Italy. It's collapsed homes on top of residents while they were sleeping. Amatrice was one of the hardest hit towns. You're seeing some of the damage there right now on your screen. The mayor there says the center of the town was devastated with several buildings raised to the ground. We'll continue bringing you up to date coverage from Italy throughout the morning. It's an expensive theft that targeted a state agency. Police are trying to track down those responsible for stealing more than $30,000 worth of equipment from Kentucky Fish and Wildlife. Police say the thieves broke into a service garage that the agency owns in Madison County. Monique Blair talked with investigators. The Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife facility on Dreyfus Road is nestled amongst more than a thousand acres of land. That land often used for activities like hunting and trap and skeet shooting. But Sunday night, thieves broke into a storage building and stole more than $30,000 worth of equipment from the facility, such as power tools, an ATV, and two zero turn lawnmowers. Later that night, police got a call from someone saying they saw two lawnmowers driving south on Muddy Creek Road. Most lawnmowers aren't, aren't out. At, at 11 o'clock at night. Obviously, this happened after dark, uh, late at night, and, and that's not a time when people are going to be mowing their grass. And then on Monday, while investigating, officials found the stolen ATV in some nearby woods. We believe that that vehicle or, or that, that ATV was left uh, with the anticipation of someone coming back and again removing it. The thieves didn't make out with the ATV, but they are still on the run. Trooper Robert Purdy tells us there was no obvious sign here at this building of forced entry. So right now, police are just trying to figure out how the thieves got in. Uh, we're trying to determine if, if maybe somebody had a key or, or was able to get inside without a, actually breaking anything. Uh, as it, as the investigation continues this week, hopefully we'll be able to answer some of those questions. This equipment is all paid for with our tax dollars, and police say the sooner the people responsible are caught, the better. In Madison County, Monique Blair, WKYT. And state police say they believe the thieves could be a man and woman working together and possibly driving a late 90s model white Ford Explorer. Police have arrested a man for a deadly shooting at a Rowan County home. 59-year-old Teddy Johnson is charged with murder. Police say he shot 24-year-old Marvin Adkins yesterday morning. Police say they were called to a home on Brown Ridge Road after Adkins got into an argument with some people yesterday. They say Adkins ran off and they couldn't find him. But police say later in the morning, Adkins returned to the home. After about an hour and a half, they all had to leave. Uh, the trooper stayed in the area. To observe for him to see if he'd come back to the roadway to find him. And sometime in the meantime, he made it back to the residence. And after there was another altercation, and that's when one of the subjects was shot. 
Police say Adkins left the home after being shot, and they say they found him dead in a field across the road. Police have not said why they suspect Johnson shot Adkins. And police have charged a fourth person with murder in connection to a double murder earlier this year. State police say they arrested 26 year old Talmadge Branham this morning in Montgomery County. Branham had originally been charged with evidence tampering in the case. In June, police say they found Devin Payton dead in Montgomery County and Brandy Davidson dead in Wolf County. Police say both had been shot to death. Carla Hunt, Devontae Hall, and Eugene Wade Jr. also face murder charges in this case. Some people in Jessamine County are doing what they can to help a family deal with an unexpected and devastating loss. Investigators say Amber Parker died last weekend in a crash on Main Street in Nicholasville. And friends say her family does not have enough money to pay for the funeral. As Garrett Weimer tells us this morning, a restaurant has stepped up to help. <laughs> Wes Hanley says they're just helping out the best way they know how, with their barbecue. Well, for us to cook every day, it's what we do. So to be able to, to let somebody else benefit off of it every once in a while and, and just to give back. And that, to me, that's church and that's you know what we all should be doing. Yes. They plan to use that barbecue to raise money for Amber Parker's funeral. Parker leaves behind a husband and two young kids when she died in a crash on Saturday. She was married to Diana Hatfield's nephew. Amber was a delightful girl. She was just, um, she's a hardworking little girl, and like she's, she's a mother of two, and um, life just cut way too short. Now the family needs help with the funeral, and Hatfield hopes the community steps up. I'm just asking for help for the family, the community. She's. And usually here, you know, everybody pulls together in a small town. And Hanley's plans to donate 25 percent of its proceeds on Friday and all of its tips. They're also raffling off some items to raise money. This is home to us, and any time that anything happens around here, it just seems like the community comes together and and picks somebody up and helps them out in need. They say they hope it will make a difficult time just a little bit easier. In Nicholasville, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. And the fundraiser will run from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Friday. Hanley's is in the Edgewood Shopping Center in Nicholasville. We have more details this morning on the case against a man accused of raping two women over the last year and a half. We first told you about the case yesterday on WKYT This Morning. Police say Jeffrey Cummins broke into a 78 year old woman's home on Donna Brook Court Sunday morning. They say he raped her, then poured bleach on her to destroy evidence. Last year, police say Cummins raped a 64 year old woman after breaking into her home. In that case, police say it took about a year to track him down and get his DNA. They say it took several more months for the state crime lab to match him to the case. Police issued a warrant in that case on Monday, a day after the Donnabrook court crime. Cummins pled not guilty to multiple charges yesterday. A National Park employee has died while working in Bell County. Investigators say 27-year-old Forrest Howard was mowing grass at the Cumberland Gap National Historical Park when a van hit him on Pinnacle View Road. Park leaders say Howard was a maintenance worker. Friends say he had compassion for others. Just absolutely loved life, you know, and just He'd do anything to help you. Didn't matter what time of day it was. If he could help, he'd help you. And it, it's just hard to find that caliber of a person. Friends say Howard left behind a fiance and two young children. Investigators say two people in the van were visiting the park. They are not sure what caused the crash. Five police officers say they were denied service at a Taco Bell in Louisville. The Louisville police officers say they went to the Taco Bell on Preston Highway for their lunch break. They say a man at the counter turned to other employees and said he wasn't taking their order and then walked away. The officers say another employee walked toward the register to take their orders. That's when they overheard a conversation between two other employees making the food. One of the, those young men uh, told the other employee, uh, I want to mess with them. I want to mess with them. And then he followed that up by saying, I'm going to mess with them. The police officers say they walked out of the restaurant at that point. In a statement, both Taco Bell and the Louisville franchise owner said they have apologized to Louisville police and the five officers individually. The franchise owner says police made it clear they didn't want any of the employees to be fired, but the owner plans to retrain staff at this Taco Bell. 
Voters have rejected a proposal to begin alcohol sales in Boyd County. Results show 58% voted no in yesterday's wet, dry vote. The city of Ashland, which is wet, had tried to stop the vote from happening, but a judge ruled the county could continue with the election. And by the way, voters also rejected in Casey County yesterday. It was a closer vote there. All right, WKYT this morning just getting started. Great to have you along on this Wednesday morning. Still to come, hot days are extra dangerous for people with diabetes. We'll explain why when we come back from the break. It is all about the heat the next few days. We will have a couple of scatter storms with that too. So we're going to go over this forecast. Got a lot to talk about. That's coming up next. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. The look around town really doesn't look all that bad. I'm meteorologist Micah Harris with your morning update and the look outside. When you're walking outside, there's no issues. I'll tell you this it's a little bit warmer. It's about 10 degrees warmer than where we have been the past couple of mornings in many spots. You go off into Frankfurt, it looks pretty good there on the highways and byways. No problems on 64 and 75 Mountain Parkway. VG Parkway, I've heard of no issues whatsoever. Go all the way southbound toward the Jellicoe Mountain coming out of Whitley County, and I don't see any issues at all. So things are looking good. They're feeling good, too. Don't get me wrong. They don't feel bad at all, but they are a little bit warmer, and that usually indicates that here comes some warm temperatures sliding on in here toward the afternoon, too. Temperatures are there in the low to mid-60s at this moment. We'll finish off in the mid-80s later on this afternoon. Now, there is a slight chance of rain. Don't get me wrong. There could be a pop-up shower or thunderstorm here or there. There's really no one location that I would say, okay, this is your better opportunity for that pop-up shower. But for the most part, we're going to be dry. It's about the heat the next few days. 87, humidity creeping back in, and that will set the stage for a couple of rumbles of thunder as we head throughout your work week, off into your weekend. So all in all, this isn't a bad forecast. I know it gets warmer, but at least we're staying mostly dry. Not fully dry, mostly dry. Humidity and temperatures, they will be increasing. You will feel very humid, very sticky the next several days because I just don't see that pattern changing anytime soon. However, small rain chances will go with that now through your weekend. And there's no real one day that I would say, okay, here's a good chance of rain. There's just not a good chance of rain in the forecast, as most of us are there 20 to about 30 percent. So high school football, yeah, there's a slight chance. Most of us stay dry, though. It looks pretty good there for high school football. A little bit muggy there for the players, I'll tell you that. And then we head off towards your weekend off into next week. No real changes to the forecast in terms of what we're looking at the next few days. Every single day will have that chance of rain, but it is relatively small, 20 to 30 percent. There's only one day with a 40 percent chance of rain. That's going to be next Tuesday, and that's a ways away. So for the most part, guys, we're doing all right. It's just going to feel a little bit different. Which yeah. is not fun because we it's been nice. We got spoiled over we the did, last two we days. We did. Yeah. Absolutely. It's been you nice. You could feel the humidity creeping up last That's night. Right. And uh, we want to hear more about your uh, event of last evening. Oh, oh yes. So, uh, it's a blast. I'd say it was. <laughs> I've seen sure. some video. All right. Uh, 445 right now. People with diabetes should take extra precautions in the high heat. Today's a perfect day to tell us this story. Today's Mom's Everyday Minute explains why. High heat and humidity can be physically draining and uncomfortable, and even more so if you have type 1 or type 2 diabetes. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, diabetics feel the heat more than people who don't have diabetes. This is because people with diabetes get dehydrated more quickly, and heat can change how your body uses insulin. Getting physically active is crucial to managing diabetes, so rather than working out during the hottest part of the day, opt to burn calories inside, where there's air conditioning or in the early morning or evening. It's also recommended to check your blood sugar more often during the summer and to avoid storing insulin or diabetes medication in direct sunlight or in a hot car. Other warm weather tips include drinking lots of water, wearing lightweight clothing, wearing sunscreen, and staying in air conditioning when possible. For more tips to make mom's life easier, visit momseveryday.com. For Moms Every Day, I'm Fida Georges. For these tips and more, just go to WKYT.com and click on Moms Every Day. And right there, of course, you'll find the latest uh, news, weather, lots of mm -hmm. other things to uh, enjoy through the day. Good to have you along on WKYT this morning as we're just getting started. A lot more news on the way. A man accused of breaking into a home an hour after being let out of jail says he did nothing wrong. We'll hear from him just ahead this morning right here on WKYT. 
Welcome back to WKYT. This morning, the time now is 4.50. A Pulaski County man who's accused of breaking into a house just hours after being released from jail says he did nothing wrong. Somerset police say after being released on bond, Jonathan Whitaker broke into a vacant home on Langdon Street. Police say they found him hiding in the attic and that he refused to come out. When Whitaker started falling through the ceiling, police say they pulled him on down to the ground. And from jail yesterday, Whitaker claimed that he did nothing wrong. I did not steal nothing, did not take nothing. So I don't know how they're getting me for burglary whenever I didn't take nothing. Whitaker admits the home does not belong to him, but he says he was just resting there. Somerset police say he did have some items from the home on him when they arrested him. Family members say the woman who lived at the home had recently died. Doctors say a teenage boy in Florida should recover after being infected by a rare brain-eating amoeba. They say he was on vacation with his family when he caught the parasite. Doctors say it's rare for anyone to survive this. Kim Hutcherson has the story. 16-year-old Sebastian De Leon, only the fourth person in the U.S. known to survive an infection caused by a rare brain-eating amoeba. Doctors say he's a lucky kid. I have treated amoeba cases in the past. Um, and they're all severely marginal fatal. Called the Galeria fowleri, the amoeba lives in warm freshwater lakes and rivers and kills 97% of its victims. It can cause severe headache, fever, nausea, vomiting, and in most cases, death. But exposure rarely equals infection. A lot of people get exposed to this. I mean, the CDC did a study in 2009 that actually showed that a lot of people have antibodies to this because they get exposed to it a lot. Doctors say the key to infection is water going into the nose with enough force to get the amoeba to the brain. Anything that you would have that would force water up your nose puts you at risk. That's anything from hot springs or diving in water or any type of water sport or even actually using one of those sinus rinse bottles if the water has not been sterilized. But health officials don't believe it's time to panic. Infections are still incredibly rare. It does uh, make you feel very scared, like if you go swimming in the lake, you're going to get this. But you have a bigger chance of getting hit by a car and dying from that accident than getting this. I'm Kim Hutcherson reporting. Doctors say when the teenager arrived at the hospital, they lowered his body temperature, induced a coma, and gave him a drug that isn't readily available at most hospitals. A handout at the Kentucky State Fair in Louisville has a lot of people talking. The Furquan Project has a booth at the fair, and its members are giving away copies of the Muslim Holy Book. They say they want to give people who have never read it a chance to learn about it. They say most people have been friendly to them and have even asked some questions. Most people are just here to get by as quickly as possible so they can see all this stuff. But if they get a chance to stop by, they usually say, like, thank you guys very much for coming and being here. We're really glad you're here. Members of the group say they brought 5,000 copies of the Koran to the fair, and they expect all of those to be gone by the end of the week. 4.53 now on WKYT This Morning. In just a moment, we'll have a look at some of the stories our news team is working on to bring you this morning. And we'll have another look at your morning forecast coming up. And welcome back into WKYT This Morning. Our time is 4.56. It's your Wednesday. We're to almost, I know. well, we're to hump day. We just have to kind of get over We're getting right along there. <laughs> it's just getting started. Right. Now it's time to take a look at some of the stories we're working on for you this morning. Here's what's going on. A man has been taken to the hospital after an overnight crash. How his phone may have played a role, that's coming up in just the next few minutes. And we're covering breaking news out of Italy this morning. More on the deadly earthquake that has caused extensive damage there just ahead on WKYT this morning at 5. Bit of a change in our weather in terms of more humidity. Let's check in with Micah. Yeah, it's that summer pattern. It is back with us, that is for sure. We're at 67 right now in Lexington. It's not even the warmest spot, 80, uh, 68 now in Frankfurt. But you go down south, another opportunity to walk outside and really enjoy it at 63 degrees in Somerset. Granted, you guys were in the mid-50s the past few mornings. It's been extremely nice, but it's still a great morning. Don't get me wrong. A lot of sunshine to be had today. By the afternoon, we're mainly dry. Can't rule out a slight chance of rain in the forecast. And the chances are there through the weekend and also that heat. We're going to go over that with another two hours. WKYT News.